as we Kamala Harris has become the presumptive nominee, some of your colleagues have been criticizing her over the issue of diversity. Tim Burchett said that she was a DEI hire. Is that appropriate? Um, listen. This election, as I noted at the outset, is going to be about policies, not personalities. Um, this is not personal with regard to Kamala Harris and her, her uh, ethnicity or her gender. It have nothing to do with this whatsoever. This is about who can deliver for the American people and get us out of the mess that we're in. Hey guys, my name is Deborah Darkins. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be responding to the Republicans and how much they are pushing this DEI narrative onto Vice President Harris. And the reason why I want to bring this up because, again, let's use some common sense here, okay? Uh, if you're going to lead with the idea that Vice President Harris is a DEI hire, yeah, you guys are going to lose an election. And so I want to dive into this mindset. I want to dive into what they think is the right thing to say. And, and I think they're trying to find the messaging on how to truly attack her. And I don't think everybody on the Republican side is on the same page yet. I think they have an idea of it, but we haven't seen it in action. So before I get into all those videos and clips, you guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's play the video. Biden said, first off, he said he's going to hire a, a black female for vice president. And that not he just skipped over what about what about white females what about any other group it just when you go down that route you you um you take mediocrity and that's what they have right now as a vice president so are you suggesting she's D, she was a dei hire 100 percent, she was a dei hire okay so you guys seen that now there's two sides to this conversation and we have to discern what is fact and what is not right and it is a fact that President Biden publicly stated that he was proud to choose Kamala Harris as the first black vice president, that he did that for the American people. OK, he did that. That's what he said. He didn't say I got the best vice president on the planet. He said I got a black female as the first vice president okay so um or rather he said that he got the first black woman vice president so is that a fact yes it is now does that mean that she is a dei hire well depending on who you talk to you could say that and in some respects it is true because what we're seeing in this country when the government or the corporation comes out and they say, hey, you know, we are going to implement these DEI policies, it starts at the top. If the president of the United States has a black vice president, that's his words. That's his words. Now, obviously, she's not black. She's Jamaican Indian, by the way, but that doesn't really matter. The point is, is that she is a person of color and she's the vice president. So he went out there and set the example. So when they started to truly incentivize corporations and made sure that it became government policy in the different departments, like the Secret Service, like the FBI, like the CIA, and all the other departments, um, they started pushing DEI, okay? And so what happened in the end? What happened was, whether they intended to do this or not, corporations and even the government technically start, started to discriminate against other people who were white, Asian, even Hispanic. Because the number one priority with DEI is a person of color, right? That's the number one priority. Let's get people of color equal opportunities, equal outcomes, right? Let's make sure everybody is represented. And so let me give it to you guys in layman's terms. A person's gender and a person's skin of color is more important, okay, in the eyes of the Biden administration, is more important than whether or not they are competent and they are the best at doing their job. There's a big difference in that. 
So you have those two sides of it. Now, this is what I wanted to get into, and they actually bring this up on CNN, is do we actually think Republicans should be leading with that? Do you think that's actually a smart thing to do? I actually don't. And I do agree with CNN on this. So let's take a look at that. Call Vice President Kamala Harris a DEI hire. Some Republicans are pushing back. Congressman Byron Donalds, one of only four Black House Republicans, appealed to his Republican colleagues to keep the focus on Vice President Harris's policies. CNN's Manu Raj, who's on Capitol Hill. Manu, how are members reacting? Yeah, there's a wide variety of reactions. There are Democrats who are very offended by those remarks, some of them flatly calling them racist remarks, others saying that this will, if Republicans focus on this, they believe it will actually help Democratic chances both at the White House and down ticket. Yes, people like Byron Donalds and others in the top ranks of House GOP and some in Republican leadership say this is precisely not what they should be focusing on at this time. But some others on the hard right are aligning themselves with Tim Burchett's remarks, as they said to me earlier today yeah so let me just say this um because this is where mindset comes into play you have to be able to quickly think and every situation is not the same however i find it funny that now republicans are finding themselves in a position of what they've been complaining about you see they've been complaining that the democrats have been trying to assassinate president trump's character they call him hitler they call him, you know, the worst. They call him the the devil, right? The Democrats have been using a lot of identity, a lot of character, a lot of things like that to attack President Trump. And the Republicans don't like it. They've always complained about it. So now they find themselves on the other side of it where they are doing that to Vice President Harris. Now, listen. What they should do, and it's the videos I've been making, just attack her policies. That tells the story. And that's where the American people are at right now. American people, I think, are fed up with leading with a person's skin color, leading with a person's gender. I, I, I think we are exhausted at that by now. I, I think they were able to get away with it in 2020. I don't think even the Democrats can lead with that. They need to find something else. But that's all they got. But on the Republican side, that's not all we got. We can just focus on immigration. If we just focus on immigration, it, it should be a wrap. She, she should have no chance of winning. If we just lead with immigration, if we lead with every single policy from the Biden administration, what else to, is there to talk about? Who cares about the skin color? Who cares if we think that President Biden's intentions was to make sure that no matter who it was, as long as they were black, they are good to go. That, that's irrelevant. No one cares about that, actually. So the, the Republicans find them in a funny spot where, like I told you, uh, it seems like they're trying to figure out what they need to start saying collectively together. And what they really should be saying is, hey, her immigration policy is bad. She has allowed all these people to come across the border. I shot a video on that. I'll probably link it in this video. Um, you know, it was her deal. She was put in charge and she let it happen. She didn't do anything to improve the border situation. We can just lead on that. Right. Why, why not just say that? Why not attack her record on her policies that she enforced as a, the district attorney in California? Focus on that. There's a lot of dirt there. But let's not focus on the color of her skin, because then that means the Republicans become the very thing that they've been complaining about. <clears throat> and I say this all the time in almost all of my videos. The biggest mistake both sides make is if you complain too much, you become the very thing that you're complaining about, because that's all you give your energy to. Sooner or later, you need to give your energy to the American people. And whichever party is able to do that in a more disciplined manner will probably win this election because I think American people are starved for that. Just tell us how you're going to help us, not the color of someone's skin, not what happened four years ago, not about January 6th, right? Not about DEI. Just tell me how you're going to help me. That's what we want to see. And all conservatives know that. I think a lot of Republicans know that. I think anybody with any common sense knows that. But just because we know it doesn't mean people are going to do it. 
And that's what it really comes down to. Let's check out this other clip. Let me ask you about something we're already starting to hear again, mainly from some of your former House colleagues who have been attacking Harris. They've been calling her a DEI vice president. A lot of people already think that attack line is racist. Are you confident that your party and Donald Trump can stay on the other side of the line and not delve into racially charged or racist attacks on a I, black I, female I candidate? would say two attacks I've heard Republicans give that are totally stupid and dumb to do is the DEI attack. Mm. Okay, so you even saw the former Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, even say, hey, guys, we need to reel it back. And a lot of the kind of common sense, middle of the road, not too uh, you know, stuck in their own way, uh, conservatives are saying the same thing. you know. And so I, I like to bring this to your guys' attention because this is mindset, right? You have to be adaptable. Mindset is not about being stuck in your own way. Right. And keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. I mean, both sides have to understand they need to adapt to where Americans are today. Right. There are certain there are certain fundamentals that are timeless that will always work. And you st and, and then you use those fundamentals and then you adapt your strategy based on who the market. The market is the American people. And so people who support Trump, they're going to vote for him. Regardless, people who are diehard Joe Biden fans, you know, they love Nancy Pelosi. They're going to vote for whoever the Democrat Party put, um, puts up. So that is already a wash. But it's those people who don't really follow politics. They're undecided or independents. They don't want to hear the character assassination stuff. Not right now. We're too close to the election to 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 do that. We need to stick to the policies. We need to stick to the facts and we need to attack people based on that. And if the Republican Party or President Trump can be very disciplined in doing that, he's going to win by a landslide as long as Vice President Harris is the nominee moving forward. Now, if the Democrats get smart and they get somebody else who's absolutely much more um, um, accepted in, in this country, and that's the thing that you know, Vice President Harris has against herself is that the last time she was seriously running for president, people did not like her. And then when she became vice president, people did not like her. And even today, people still don't like her because that's what the numbers are showing. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, both sides have to be adaptable. And we have to understand that certain rhetoric isn't actually going to get it done because we're trying to get people to show up and vote, right? And it brings us back to mindset, which is where you put your energy is like investing. You have to make sure you're investing into the right vehicle. Calling Vice President Harris a DEI hire is not the right vehicle. There's no return on that. And the same is true for the Democrats. Calling you know, President Trump, the threat to democracy, there's no return on that anymore. People look past that saying that he's a convicted felon. There's no return on that either because this is what the numbers have shown us already. So both sides need to get it together in that regard. Um, and like I, I keep saying, I mean, listen, any person with any common sense who does research knows she should not win. But she has money and a machine behind her and the media behind her. So we shall see. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys some of this crazy stuff that was going on um, and to call out when we don't have the right mindset around something. And this would be one of those things. Why don't we just watch one more video just for the hell of it? Let's check this out. But it's also about what is the culture of the environment? How are we approaching this issue in a way that we also understand we cannot support and help our young people if we also don't also look at the context in which those young people live and are being raised, which means necessarily because our, our edict and our mission is not to come out and say, well, we could do this better. Part of the extension of the work you will do is, yes, focused on our young leaders and our young people, but understanding we also then have to be clear about the needs of their parents and their grandparents and their teachers and their communities. Because none of us just live in a silo. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, 
I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. Okay, so you guys seen that. And, um, you know, we can find clips like this all day long. But even in that, in the scenario what I'm talking about, the context of what I'm talking about in this video, that the Republicans, they don't even need to focus on that stuff either. They need to focus on the policies, right? Focus on the results. I teach people about this when it comes to mindset. Results tell the story. You can tell me that you want to be a champion. You can tell me that you're a successful person. I don't care what you say. What does the results say? Because that tells the story. And that's where we, on the right side of things, that's where we need to focus on in pushing that message out there to our friends, our family, and the American people. So that's my mindset. What is yours? What do you guys think about, I think it's a mistake, that some of these Republicans are coming out and calling VP Harris a uh, DEI hire. Um, do you really think that's going to help President Trump win the election? Do you think it will help independents and people on the fence actually vote for President Trump? Or do you believe it's going to backfire on them? I want to know what your thoughts are and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. I will see you in the next one.